The evening bells are about to toll, and you know what that means. Sobroni of Gene Day Reviews here with another Servant Spotlight. This time for the granddaddy of all assassins, King Hassan. We're going to be examining his stats and skills, as well as going over pointers on how to utilize him effectively and an overall grade comparing him to how he stacks up to the other 5 star servants. Now, on to King Hassan's stats. The King has a max HP of 13,338, which for a 5 star assassin is pretty high, but still just slightly below average overall. His max attack is 11,848, however when adjusted to fit his 0.9 times class damage modifier, it comes out to just 10,663. That's still very high for an assassin, second only to Shuten, but extremely low compared to all the other 5 star servants. Taking a look at his skills, his first skill is Battle Continuation Rank EX. It applies Guts one time for 5 turns, reviving him with between 3000 and 5000 HP depending on level. King Hassan's second skill is Protection of the Faith Rank A++++. It increases his debuff resist for 3 turns between 50% and 100%. It also restores between 1000 and 2500 HP, increases his defense between 20 and 40% for one turn, and increases his attack for three turns between 10 and 20%, all depending on level. And finally, his last skill is Evening Bell Rank EX. It decreases the death resist of an enemy for three turns between 50 and 100%, and increases his Buster Card effectiveness for one turn between 30 and 50%, both depending on levels. Moving on to his passives, King Hassan has Magic Resistance Rank B, which increases his debuff resist by 17.5%, Presence Concealment Rank A, which increases his Crit Star Drop Rate by 10%, Independent Action Rank B, which increases his Crit Strength by 8%, and At the Boundary Rank A, which applies Death Immunity, increases Charm Resist by 100%, and gives him a 5% chance to inflict death with each of his attacks. Taking a look at his deck in Noble Phantasm, King Hassan has a full on buster deck with quick arts buster 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 and a buster Noble Phantasm. His Noble Phantasm is Azrael, it deals significant damage to a single enemy with between a 600% and 1000% damage modifier depending on level, and it also has a high chance to inflict death between 100 and 200% depending on overcharge. Taking a closer look at his cards, we see that his quick card hits 5 times, his arts card hits 3 times, his buster hits once, and his extra attack hits 6 times. He has an NP gain rate of 1% and a star rate of 25.5%. This translates into very good Noble Phantasm gain and good star generating despite the triple buster deck because of the many hits on his quick and extra cards plus the insane NP gain rate for his arts. The first thing you need to know about King Hassan is that him and Shinjuku Avenger are definitely not a sneaky attempt by Nasu to put Artorius and Sif in the game. The second thing you need to know is that he's an incredibly powerful servant. From his appearance to his gameplay, everything about King Hassan is intimidating. His stats are just plain scary for an assassin with both high attack and HP for his class. And on top of that, his passives are among the best in the game with both good buffs to star generating and crit damage to complement his impressive quick card. And at the boundary grants him full on death immunity, a chance to instantly kill enemies with every strike, and near full thought immunity so that both Maeve and Shuten will never be able to get in his cloak. But that's just the tip of the iceberg. King Hassan also sports one of the best active skill sets in the game. For those of you who remember my Lancer Vlad video, you will know how much I love Protection of the Faith. King Hassan has the same version as Vlad and it's just as good on him, providing him a gigantic defensive buff, a solid attack buff with huge uptime, a massive debuff resist, and a good heal all on one skill with an incredibly short cooldown. The defense buff and healing give him enough tankiness to even eat an enemy Noble Phantasm, but don't overlook that debuff resist because when it's active, which is going to be most of the battle, King Hassan is essentially immune to debuffs, so this is great for challenge quests and harder content. King Hassan also packs his own version of Mana Burst with Evening Bell. On top of being a massive buff to his Noble Phantasm damage and Buster damage, this skill also makes enemies twice as likely to die from instant death, which further complements your Noble Phantasm. And finally, King Hassan's Battle Continuation Rank EX 
is a particularly powerful version of the skill as it revives you with a full 5000 HP as opposed to just 1000. When combined with Protection of the Faith, Hassan can revive with more than 50% of his total HP, so he's very tanky more so than most Buster servants. Skill priority should be Protection of the Faith first as that's your most consistent and useful buff, followed by Evening Bells for damage and better chance to inflict death, and then finally, battle continuation because it's the most situational. If you want to focus more on proccing instant death and high burst damage over consistency, then I'd say go for Evening Bell first instead of Protection of the Faith. King Hassan's Noble Phantasm is a straightforward buster nuke with a high chance to inflict death. There isn't much utility or nuance here, but there doesn't really need to be because it hits hard and you should just use it to kill big things. King Hassan's strength lies not only in his amazing skills, but in his surprising lack of weaknesses. The Assassin class is filled to the brim with situational servants who usually pack a few glaring weaknesses in exchange for some niche strengths. King Hassan, however, manages to not only excel past every other Assassin in terms of power, but he doesn't have nearly as many weaknesses as most of them. For one thing, despite his class modifier severely gimping his damage, his triple buster deck and low cooldown attack buff and mana burst allow him to output damage comparable to some high tier offensive servants. His survivability isn't a problem either because of his heal and guts which makes him difficult to kill, allowing him to work well with minimal defensive support. And finally, the usual weakness of a triple buster deck, that being low noble phantasm gain and star generating, don't affect him much either because both his arts and quick cards as well as his extra card are phenomenal and can gain him upwards of 40% NP charge in a single brave chain, especially if it crits. It's difficult to find big weaknesses with King Hassan, but if I had to nitpick, he does still suffer from his class modifier, which dampens his attack power. So even though he does overcome this problem somewhat thanks to his buster deck and skills, don't expect him to put up damage on the scale of 5 star berserkers. Also his focus on instant death, while fun, is also not efficient. Instant death as a mechanic is very flawed and inconsistent, which makes a big portion of his playstyle irrelevant. Small gripes aside, let's talk team comp. There are three types of teams you want to use King Hassan on. Buster teams, crit teams, or instant death teams. On Buster teams, King Hassan functions similarly to other major offensive servants like Gil and Musashi in that you're going to want to shower him with damage buffs. But unlike them, he's less dependent on defensive supports. For this type of team, servants like Nightingale and Leonidas fit well. Nightingale's Angel's Cry is one of the best support skills in the game and it's going to increase King Hassan's DPS and NP damage tremendously. Plus, between her heal and King Hassan's guts and protection of the faith, he can revive with nearly full HP. Leonidas is a great support choice too because he provides a good buster buff for Hassan while also being able to provide him with just a bit of defense for tougher fights. Rather than a traditional buster team, you can also go the crit route. Your damage is going to be less consistent, but it's going to be much more explosive and your arts and quick cards are going to be significantly stronger. For this type of team, Vlad, Lancer, and Brynhilda are excellent teammates. Both are Lancers, so they have slightly less star weight than King Hassan, and thus they won't take as many stars from him. Vlad's a great star generator thanks to Innocent Monster, which is basically a built-in max limit broken 2030 with very low cooldown, so it's going to be consistent. Bryn isn't as consistent, but she does have a means of increasing star drop rate for the whole team and buffing Hassan's star weight to the point where he doesn't even have to worry about riders taking stars from him. Finally, if you want something fun, go for an instant death team. Both Shikis are ideal for this team comp, each of their death resist debuffs are going to stack with King Hassan's, so you can make enemies considerably weak to instant death. This can be useful for farming, especially if you're farming tougher mid-boss style enemies like demons and chimeras for hearts or talons. King Hassan's Bondcraft Essence is Abyss of the Valley, it increases your debuff resist by 100%, it's not great as you already have this effect in a low cooldown skill, so this craft essence is just redundant. 
Instead, use craft essences that are going to buff your overall damage or your crit consistency. For traditional buster teams, I recommend craft essences like Black Grail, Limited Zero, Golden Sumo, or First Sunrise. Hassan's heal makes up for the burn damage on Black Grail. If you're going to be using a crit team, then your focus should be on craft essences that buff crit damage or star weight, like Seal Designation Enforcer, Joint Recital, or Victor from the Moon. For some future proofing, Talk of the Hot Sands and Starry Nights both work phenomenally depending on whether you want more consistent crits or heavier NP damage. Overall, King Hassan is a seriously powerful and well-rounded servant with few weaknesses. His skill set and passives are some of the best in the game, providing him enough damage and defense to work in any situation. His deck not only gives him strong damage, but also good Noble Phantasm gain and good star generating. On the downside, instant death as a mechanic isn't practical, and he does still have a 0.9 times damage class modifier to nerf his potential. All that said though, he is still one of the best there is, so he gets an A plus from me. He's arguably the best assassin in my opinion, depending on the circumstances, and he is just a force to be reckoned with. And those are my thoughts on King Hassan. When it comes to the King Hassan vs Jack debate, they both fill drastically different roles and are both the best at what they do, so if you do already have Jack, don't let that deter you from rolling for King Hassan if you want him. And for those of you who are rolling, I wish you all luck. As always, let me know what you think in the comments below, and don't forget to leave a like if you enjoyed the video, and consider subscribing if you really enjoyed the video. Join the party over at our Discord, chill with us on Twitch, and follow us on Twitter. And I'll see you all in the next Servant Spotlight. Silverone out. Later.